10 tips for taking the IELTS test. For the listening section, it's 40 questions and about 30 minutes. Reading, 40 questions and 60 minutes. Writing, two tasks, 60 minutes. And speaking, three parts, 11 to 14 minutes. By understanding how the test is structured, you'll know exactly what to expect and what you need to work on. Plan preparation. Don't cram, don't rush. Make sure you have enough time to prepare. Set a reasonable goal or grade to strive for. Plan for each section separately. Writing, speaking, listening and reading are all fundamentally different. Bunching everything together will result in unnecessary stress and chaos. By focusing on each individual section, you will make things clear for yourself. Focus on your lessons on specific skills instead of trying to do everything all at once. Determine what the ideal but realistic score would be and follow an effective study plan to achieve that. The right kind of study plan is important and will help you progress efficiently. Keep the following points in mind when drafting your study plan. Begin by planning how much time would be required to study each section. It might be that you need more time on some sections and less on others. If your speaking and listening skills are strong, then you need to focus more on reading and writing. It's important to practice tests to gauge your strengths and weaknesses. Now that you know how much time you need to prepare each section, develop a study schedule. Plan out which days you will focus on a particular section. Stick to the schedule and follow it consistently. Students study better when they know exactly what they will be doing on a given day. Also, keep it balanced by including time to cover other activities as well. Re-evaluate your study plan from time to time. It should be all about being more productive so if you are falling behind with progress on a section, make changes as needed. Improve vocabulary. Read more. Each section of the test will require test takers to know enough vocabulary. I created a book with 1,300 academic words that will help students with their English. Each entry comes with a definition and example sentence. Check it out in the description below. Don't translate. Translating vocabulary and sentences wastes a lot of time. It is very rare that students have extra time during the test. If you don't know a word, look at the context of the sentence and the words around it instead of trying to translate it. Learners should also be familiar with vocabulary used in questions. The following words are commonly found in essay test questions. Understanding them is essential to success on such questions. Analyze, break into separate parts and discuss, examine or interpret each part. Explain, make an idea clear, show logically how a concept is developed, give the reasons for an event. Compare, examine two or more things, identify similarities and differences. Illustrate. Give concrete examples. Explain clearly by using comparisons or examples. Contrast. Show differences set in opposition. Interpret. Comment upon. Give examples. Describe relationships. Explain the meaning. Describe. Then evaluate. Criticize. Make judgments. Evaluate comparative worth. Criticism often involves analysis. Outline. Describe main ideas, characteristics or events. Does not necessarily mean numbering them. Answer structure. Races. To construct more thoughtful and thorough responses to comprehensive questions, it is not enough to simply answer the questions. For this, most instructors teach the races strategy. Restate. Use words from the question to begin your answer. Take out the question word who, what, where, when, how, why. What is your favorite color? My favorite color is. Why is it important to work hard in school? It is important to work hard in school because. Answer. Answer all parts of the question using academic writing or speaking. Make sure you understand what the question is asking. Answer all parts of the question. Use vocabulary from the text in your answer. Cite. Cite evidence from the text to support your answer. Be a detective. There are two ways. Paraphrase. Write information from the text in your own words. No need for quotation marks. Direct quote. Use exact words from the text. Quotation marks are needed here. Sentence starters. According to the text in the video. For example, the author of the article states that an example from the text is explain. Explain how your evidence 
proves your answer. Make a connection to yourself or something you have read or seen. Sentence starters. This evidence shows me. That shows that. This means I believe. Sum up. Always wrap your answers with one concluding sentence. Sentence enders include finally, therefore, to sum up, all in all, as you can see. Remember, this is for one test. You don't need to learn every single sentence starter or transition phrase. Rather, plan which ones you will prepare and use in each question ahead of time. For example, in the first question, in the writing section, the sentence starters you will use are, I believe, an example from the text, to sum up. Do the same with vocabulary. Memorize a list of words that sound good that you can insert into each section to sound better. It's not cheating, it's studying with purpose. You know the format of the test by preparing for specific possible questions will make you more confident. Some more connection words or transitions you can use are steps, first, second, next, finally, reasons, because, since, results, as a result, so, therefore, examples, for example, such as, comparisons, in contrast, on the other hand, restatements of information, in other words, that is, conclusions, in conclusion, in summary. Practice this strategy. Write out keywords from the text, listening or speaking questions, then answer using the racist strategy. Time management. Timing is one of the biggest issues students face when doing the IELTS, TOEFL or TOEIC exams. Even native speakers that attempt these tests struggle due to the limited amount of time given. So it should be a priority to prepare for that challenge. The total test time for IELTS is 2 hours and 44 minutes. The listening is 30 minutes, speaking 14, reading 60, writing 60. During the exam, Keep an eye on the clock or your watch. And if you've spent a minute on a question and still don't know the answer, guess and move on. You can return at the end. If you get stuck at a question, it doesn't just waste time, but also causes you to have a bit of a mental block and takes away from your focus. To combat that, you should practice tests often under exam conditions. That means you have to time yourself according to the test time. You will have to learn how to work efficiently with time in mind. Practice tests. The best way to prepare for IELTS, TOEFL or TOEIC is by doing practice tests. It might be a good idea to purchase a textbook specifically for the test that you can work through. One that has exercises, vocabulary, practice tests, and explains the answers. You don't necessarily have to work from front to back, rather work on sections you find most challenging. It is possible to have a book that is much easier than official test resources. So look for free samples on the internet to supplement the work you are doing. Also, make sure that the question types are up to date. Note taking. Become an expert note taker. Developing note taking skills is essential for solving tests. Here are some tips to improve your note taking. When practicing reading, underline the main ideas and take notes on a piece of paper. Get in the habit of taking notes when listening to English media on YouTube, ebooks, or podcasts or Netflix. Avoid writing full sentences as it takes unnecessary time. Just jot down relevant chunks of the information to get clarity on the main idea. Practice remembering important details as well as writing faster in English. If you get into the habit of taking notes and using those in your answers, it will give you valuable information and structure to work with. This can be used for all sections even before speaking. Make notes to use as a cheat sheet to support your answers. Read more. Let's face it, reading practice test passages may be boring. Some people may be interested in the phases of the moon or the geopolitics of ancient Rome, but most tend to fall asleep after the first paragraph. Staying focused is an enormous part of scoring well on English tests. Even if you can read the words but you don't know what they mean 
or how it connects to the rest of the passage, you won't be able to accurately answer the questions. Therefore, you have to increase your focus by getting in the habit of reading more. But you cannot read passages the same way you read a newspaper or novel. Read with certain goals in mind. Read actively. Passive reading is when you read a newspaper, then forget pretty much everything you read besides a vague main idea. You might remember that you read about a war in Syria, but you will not be able to recall important descriptive vocabulary, details in each paragraph, or specific quotes. Active reading will help you remember a lot more of what you read. And this skill is extremely important for all sections of the test. While most exams test your memory, IELTS, TOEFL and TOE tests test your comprehension. They don't want to see if you remember the material, but if you can understand it. Your goal is to understand what you read. How do you do that? Before you start reading a passage, imagine that you are a teacher. You have to explain what you have read to a six year old student. You have to understand the main idea and important vocabulary. Then reword it in a way that a child would understand. Practice doing that, if possible, with a partner. Each of you read a different passage, then explain it in a clear, understandable way. You should also try to remember specific information or quotes from the reading. If you practice the skill, you will massively improve the ability of understanding the material and applying it in English tests. Focus on what's important. Ignore what's not. Learn all the possible questions and their variations. That way you don't have to waste time reading or rereading questions. Once you have done enough examples and know exactly what the question requires, get started right away. Look for keywords and create a list of vocabulary you can use in your answers. Once you sit down for the test, immediately write these words next to the question. That will leave you with more mental space to focus on using the evidence in the passage or question. Most English learners believe that they need to improve their English as a whole, which is fine, unless your goal is getting the best possible score in a test. You don't need a breadth of knowledge. You need specific words and phrases for your answers. Whatever you learn extra, really doesn't matter. Find keywords and synonyms. Look for paraphrases and eliminate wrong answers. If it's listening, speaking, writing or reading. Reflection. Countless English test takers fall into the practice trap. They feel that the best way to improve their score is to keep on studying and retaking the test, but they never reflect on what they have learned. It is important to learn the para framework. Plan, act, reflect, adjust. Practice is just one small step of this process. You must also spend a significant amount of time planning, reflecting and adjusting. Plan for success. Think of your weaknesses and possible challenges you'll face. Construct a plan to solve these problems. Take mistakes for reading, for example. There are only three possible reasons why a student might get an answer wrong. They misread the passage, misread the question, did not understand the vocabulary. You should therefore instill the following reactions. Misread the passage. I have to pay better attention to keywords in the question next time. I was looking at the wrong place in the passage for the answer. Misread the question. I I always make the same mistake with negative detail questions. I choose a correct answer rather than an incorrect one. From now on, I will pay special attention to each question and keep a sharp eye out for the words not or accept. Did not understand the vocabulary. I didn't understand the word acquire. I'm going to look up some examples with the word and then practice writing a few sentences of my own. If I have a teacher, I will ask her to correct my grammatical mistakes. That is a tough habit to learn because it takes time and focus, two of our most precious resources. Preparing for an English test is a bit different than for communication, but that doesn't mean that it has to be hard. The IELTS reading section. The reading test is the second section in the IELTS test and depending on your situation, you'll either need to take academic or general training. No matter which you take, 
The overall reading test is the same. You'll answer exactly 40 questions based on three different readings. You have 60 minutes to complete the reading section. Question types. In each test, there are 10 specific question types. By knowing what type of question it is, will make it much easier to answer. Vocabulary. The word in paragraph two is closest in meaning to. Facts. According to paragraph four, what? Which of the following? It is stated in paragraph four that. Negatives. All of the following are mentioned in paragraph three, except which of the following is not mentioned. Meaning, what can be inferred from paragraph five about? Paragraph five implies that. Paragraph five suggests. Author's intent. In paragraph six, the author discusses in order to. Why does the author mention? Simplify a sentence. Which of the sentences below best expresses the essential information in the highlighted sentence in paragraph four? Insert text. In paragraph two, there is a missing sentence. Where would the sentence best fit? Reference. The word in paragraph one refers to. Summary. An introductory sentence for a brief summary of the passage is provided below. Complete the summary by selecting the three answer choices that express the most important ideas in the passage. Organization. Complete the table below to summarize information about in the passage. Match the appropriate statements too. By practicing these questions, you will have clarity on how to find the best answer. Make sure to read each question carefully. Pay special attention to any specific instructions. Before taking the test, make sure you understand each question type and the strategies for answering them. To measure your progress, take a few practice tests. After checking your answers, take some time to analyze the incorrect answers. Keywords and modifiers. Don't meticulously read every word in a test. Instead, Focus on key words. This is not a test to see how well you can read each word. Rather skip words that are unimportant and search for answers. Keywords are important words in the question that can help students find answers quickly. What are keywords? Keywords are almost never prepositions, under, in, or articles, a and the. Keywords are almost always verbs, nouns, or adjectives. Proper nouns are almost always keywords. Proper nouns are words that identify a specific person, place, or thing. For example, city is a common noun, but New York City is a proper noun. Also, in multiple choice, students can eliminate wrong answers by paying attention to modifiers. What is a modifier? A modifier is a word usually an adjective or noun that changes the meaning of the head noun. The wrong modifier can change the significance of a statement. The best way to understand is to look at a few examples. This event had a tremendous impact. This event had some impact. This event had almost no impact. As you can see, modifiers are an easy way to make a possible choice incorrect. All you have to do is change a single word and it changes the entire meaning of the sentence. This is one of the infamous trap answers in IELTS, TOEFL and TOEIC tests. So be sure not to fall for the modifier trap. There is a huge difference between tremendous impact and almost no impact. Look for extreme modifiers that tend to make the question false. Extreme modifiers such as always, all, never or only make it more likely that the question is false. Here is a list of extreme modifiers. All, none, best, absolutely, always, never, worst, absolutely not, only, nobody, everybody, certainly, invariably, no one, everyone, certainly not. Look for clue words and numbers. If two answers are opposite, one is probably correct. Answers with the following words are usually incorrect. Always, never, all, must. Qualifying words tend to make a question true. Qualifiers, seldom, often, many, increase the likelihood that a statement is true. Qualifiers include words such as usually, frequently, often, sometimes, some, seldom, many, much, probably, a majority, most, might, a few, may, 
unlikely. Look for grammatical clues between the question and the choices. For example, the question and the correct answer often have verbs of the same tense and have nouns and verbs that agree. Underline familiar words or phrases from the lecture or textbook. Be aware of degrees of correctness. With numbers, one choice is usually too small or too large. These choices may be eliminated. Word parts. In addition to learning academic vocabulary, it is beneficial to learn the parts of a word. For example, the prefixes, suffixes, and roots of words. Word roots are the core or base of a word, carrying its fundamental meaning. They are usually derived from other languages like Latin or Greek. Many English words are built upon these roots. By understanding the word roots, you can decipher the meanings of unfamiliar words. For example, the root ord means hear, in Latin. Words like audio, related to hearing, and audience, a group of people who listen, contains this root. Prefixes are small groups of letters added to the beginning of a word. They change or enhance the meaning of the word. Understanding common prefixes helps in understanding and forming new words. For example, the prefix un added to happy changes the meaning to unhappy, indicating the opposite or negation of happiness. Suffixes are groups of letters added to the end of a word. They also modify the meaning of the word, often indicating the word's part of speech, noun, verb, adjective, and so on, or the tense of the verb. For example, the suffix er added to teach forms teacher, indicating a person who teaches. By recognizing and understanding word roots, prefixes, and suffixes, you can break down unfamiliar words into smaller parts and comprehend their meanings more easily. This knowledge also helps in building your vocabulary and forming new words by combining different word parts. Some more examples include circum, go around, circumvent, dia, through, diameter, x, out of, exposure. Negative words or prefixes complicate the statement. The prefixes un, in, miss will alter the meaning of the statement. I put a list of word parts in the description which you can download for free. Paraphrasing. During the test there are some difficult words that they might use in the text but use a synonym when asking a question. Some examples include historical sites, tourist attractions, hotel, accommodation facility, on a website, through the internet, online, venue, place or location, phone number, contact information, contract, agreement, additional fee, extra charge, clothing, apparel, garment, outfit. By recognizing the different ways a question and answer are related by paraphrasing will help you understand the relationship and have a better chance at answering correctly. Practice with short passages. To learn how to compose sentences, short paragraphs, and short answers, look for some college textbooks, language books, or online reading material with follow-up questions after each story or chapter. Breaking News English is a wonderful website for this because it has a library of news articles, all followed by questions. If your favorite book doesn't include questions, ask ChatGPT to make some questions or ask a friend or teacher to create some for you. Read the stories or chapters carefully. Don't just pay attention to the storyline and main ideas, but also examine the vocabulary, sentence structures, and grammatical features used. By observing and analyzing the English language, you will improve your understanding and can use what you have learned in your reading skills. Don't forget to take notes while reading. Who are the characters? What is the main idea? What happened? These are all questions you want to know the answers to. Underline and circle words or passages that you find important. Once you have read the text, answer the questions. Review your answers before checking the correct answer. Reading speed. Time is of the essence when it comes to taking an English test like IELTS, TOEFL, or TOEIC. In fact, your ability to pace yourself can make or break your final score. In other sections, time is specifically called out. For example, if you are speaking, you will have 15 seconds to prepare an answer and 45 seconds to record it. In the listening section, 
you can only hear the dialogue when it's played to you. The reading section is where a sense of time and pace will need to come from you and you alone. You need to judge how much time you have left to complete the readings and give your answers. This is trickier than it seems because you will be faced with not one difficult to answer text, but several. If you want more time to answer the questions, you will need to read each passage in just four or five minutes. And you're probably going to want to read each passage more than once. That's tough. To succeed, you'll need to start improving your reading speed. Time yourself as you study for the test and note how long it takes to read through a given passage. You will notice that you slow down when your level of comprehension drops down and that's normal. Everyone reads at a different pace. Your task is to make your reading pace slightly faster for the very specific test taking situation. So you can switch gears and go into full speed mode if you need to. Apart from studying academic passages, be sure to read other English language material as well. Read English literature, newspapers and magazines. Reading a variety of English writing styles will help improve your reading speed. Comprehension speed. Once you have worked on your reading speed and are comfortable speed reading a complex English passage in less time, you are ready for the next step. Now you need to learn how to remain calm and avoid stressing out when you encounter an unfamiliar word. The reading section will be full of challenging words that you have not seen before. They put in challenging words that you probably don't know on purpose. The reading section will ask you to deduce meaning and infer information from words you probably don't understand. This is what the reading section is actually testing. Not your ability to memorize a dictionary before the test, but your skill at dealing with vocabulary words that you don't know. Not knowing a word is not only normal, but is expected from speakers of English as a foreign language. When you stumble across a word you don't understand, your first reaction might be to check Google Translate or consult a dictionary. When these tools aren't available, you may panic and get hung up on trying to understand the word, wasting time that is extremely valuable during the test. Well, relax. Force yourself to skip that unknown word and continue reading. Often, you will find that the meaning of the whole text is easy to understand, even if you didn't understand a few words. Annotate. Learn to write down notes while reading. When a student tells me that he or she gets bored, zones out, and can finish a reading passage on time, I can cure them nine out of 10 times with a specific annotation strategy. Students don't have the time to do hardcore annotations like we might normally teach in English class, but they can likely annotate main ideas, namely, I ask the students to circle a word or phrase in each paragraph that pinpoints what the paragraph is about. The benefits of this includes circles pop more than underlines, especially when using a pencil. You now have a visual trail of the structure of the text. The passage is now easier to skim when going back to find a text dependent answer. Now that you have been actively paying attention for the main idea, filtering out things that are less important and can now answer main idea multiple choice questions more easily. Annotating also causes less zoning out due to active reading and fewer minutes overall spent reading due to better focus. In addition to circling keywords, try to only underline whatever you feel is important. Many students underline too much so that they have difficulty seeing what's important. Context. Scan the reading content. Scanning the content is the first step that you need to do on the reading part of an English test. The second step is to identify the topic of the content and pick out specific details. Next step is to find the keywords in the text and summarize the main idea of content. Find the synonyms. Improving English vocabulary skill is an essential factor that brings good results for a test. While you are studying and find some words that you don't know, look up the synonyms. This will help you understand the meaning of the words and also build a strong vocabulary. For example, when you read a sentence that says, the professor looks annoyed and you don't know what annoyed means, look up synonyms for annoyed. Match the 
questions to the text. Once you are done with reading the text, the next step is to move on to the questions of the test. It is very important to find the points of the questions. Usually the questions have some clues that might help you choose the correct answers. When you have figured out the points, move on to the text again and skim and scan the whole passage that matches those points. Read the questions carefully. One of the most common mistakes people make is that they don't read the questions in the test carefully. As I said before, the questions might have keywords or answers, and sometimes questions are deliberately designed to make test takers confused. Make sure to understand the questions with precision. Trust your instincts. Sometimes students will become confused between a right answer and the best possible answer. When they find a right answer, it literally means that there is only one correct answer. However, when they find the best possible answer, there might be several correct answers. You need to guess and find the best possible answers based on the facts in context. In this process, learn to trust your instincts. Question tips. Before you read the passage, skim through and underline important information. Then, before you start answering, take a quick look at the questions first. Remember that questions appear in groups of three or four, so read those questions before studying the text. Make sure to highlight key information in the questions, and since you've skimmed the passage and identified all the keywords, it will make it easier to find the answers. Questions follow the same order as the paragraphs, so the first question's answer will be around the top of the reading passage, with each question's answer appearing in order. Answer every question. This is age-old advice that every teacher routinely tells their learners. Students have to answer every question, even if they cannot find the answer or right option. If you don't answer, it's an automatic zero. But if you make an educated guess, there's a chance it might be right. Check answers once you are done and have time left. Try to answer all the questions and leave 15 minutes for checking. That can help improve your reading score. The reading section of English language tests requires focused practice and the development of specific strategies. By following these 10 tips, you can enhance your reading skills, improve comprehension, and perform better in the IELTS, TOEFL or TOEIC tests. Remember to skim the passage first, identify keywords and actively read for comprehension. With consistent effort and targeted preparation, you can excel in the reading section and achieve a high score. IELTS listening test section. The listening test is the first test you'll complete in your IELTS exam. It is divided into four sections and each containing a recording. Four recordings, 40 questions in total for about 30 minutes. Section one is a conversation between two people set in an everyday social context. For example, you might hear a conversation about confirming details for a reservation or placing an order over the phone. Section two is a monologue set in everyday social context. For example, you might hear a speech about local facilities or someone providing directions or presenting basic information about an event. Section three is a conversation between up to four people set in an educational or training context. For example, you might hear a university tutor and a student discussing an assignment or a couple of students discussing something from class. Section four is a monologue on an academic subject. For example, you will hear a university lecture from a professor. This is the toughest recording on the listening exam for most students. Your task will be to listen and answer the questions as they are heard in the audio. You'll only hear each audio recording once. So, you only get one chance to hear and answer each question. At the very end, you'll be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs consist of a verb and one or more participle, a preposition or adverb, that completely change the meaning of the main verb. Some examples include bring up, which means to mention or raise a topic, or call off, to cancel or terminate something. Native speakers frequently use phrasal verbs in their speech 
and being familiar with these expressions allows learners to understand and participate in conversations more effectively. I've created a book with 1000 phrasal verbs that every English learner should know. I put it in the description below. Understand the phrasal verbs in context by examining example sentences. Observe how the phrasal verb changes the overall meaning of the sentence and identify any patterns in usage. For example, I turned up at the party and surprised everyone. Turn means one thing, but turned up means another. Engage in listening exercises that focus on phrasal verbs. Listen to dialogues or conversations where phrasal verbs are used and try to identify and understand them. Listening study schedule. Time management doesn't just apply to taking the test. It starts the moment you start studying for it. Maximize your listening growth in the least amount of time with a test study schedule. Creating a study schedule for IELTS, TOEFL or TOEIC is the most powerful way you can improve your score. Here's an example. Monday 9 to 10 a.m. do the listening section of test number 13. Tuesday 9 to 10 a.m. review the answers from the day before. Identify wrong choices and understand why they were incorrect. Wednesday transcribe one passage from test 13. Identify five words, phrases or sentences that you have trouble understanding and so on. By planning your listening practice, you are consciously putting effort into winning, which means that you are more likely to succeed if it's written down rather than passively trying to achieve it. At the start of each week, create your weekly schedule. Write down what you will study and that focus will help you improve much faster. Note taking. You have to train yourself to take notes during the test on the most important content. You shouldn't worry about listening for new information and remembering it. So during the listening phase, write down keywords, important vocabulary, proper nouns, and what you think the main idea is. Content words are meaningful words that contain significance, such as people or places, actions, and descriptions. Since time is of the essence, only write down the consonants and core symbols. Vowels are so common that you could write a word without using any vowels and still understand the meaning. This could be sleep, symptoms and depression. Some symbols you can use when taking notes. Benefit, positive, also well, together, combined, no, not, negative, stop, I'm not sure, the lecturer is not sure. Question. Rising. Increase. Improve. Positive. Beneficial. Going down. Decreasing. Problematic. Hurting. Leads to. Results in. Follows. Is equal to. The same as. Something is like. Similar to. Not equal to. Not the same as. Dissimilar. And connected to. Symbols are important. Not only do they save you time, but also increase the amount of information you write down about the listening passages. Start with just two or three. I suggest the arrows since they are easiest to understand. You have to be succinct. If you spend time writing down unnecessary information, you will miss important content. Question types. There are seven main question types in a listening test. Content. What is the topic of discussion? What is the professor mainly discussing? Purpose. Why does the student visit the professor? Why does the professor mention that? Detail. What is stated in the passage? According to the speaker, what do they say? Speaker's attitude. What is the professor's opinion of? What can be inferred about the student? Inferred is a great word. It means what does it mean? What can we learn from that? Function. What does the speaker mean when he says? Why does the professor say this? Inferences. What can be inferred about? What does the speaker imply about? Organization. How does the professor organize the information about? While it's important to know the different question types, it's even more important for you to know how to answer each type. Make sure to practice identifying and answering these different question types. 
Passage structure. When you understand the structure of a conversation or lecture, you can anticipate what will be said and which information is important. Most listening conversational passages have a fairly simple structure. First, a problem is presented by a student. Next, someone offers a solution. Finally, someone describes the steps needed to solve the problem. Academic lectures are typically organized based on six different structures. Cause and effect, historical narrative, problem and solution, sequence of steps, compare and contrast, and category with specific examples. Practice examples of these questions so that you can know these structures and what is required to answer correctly. Focus on the main idea. Don't try to understand everything in the listening section. Think of the lectures and conversations as stories, the same way as when you would watch a movie. You may not understand every word. What is most important is that you understand what is happening and the context. There are two priorities for you to identify. The main idea of the topic how the professor illustrates, expands on, or explains the main idea, what does the professor want me to know, and related ideas and relationships within a lecture. Reasons, because, since. Results, as a result, so, therefore, thus, consequently. Examples, for example, such as, comparison, in contrast, then, an opposing idea, on the other hand, however, another idea, Furthermore, moreover, besides, a similar idea, similarly, likewise, restatements of information, in other words, that is, conclusions, in conclusion, in summary. Active listener. A definition of active listening is that it requires feedback from the listener. When you are having a conversation with someone, you naturally listen in an active manner because you need to respond. Most students listen to listening passages passively because they are taking notes on what they hear and trying to understand everything. Listen actively. Try to answer the following questions. Who, what, when, where, why, how. To practice this, listen to a passage and then try to explain it as if you were explaining it to a six-year-old. Here are some quick fire listening tips. Focus on the second speaker. In a conversation between two people, the answer is often, but not always, said by the second speaker. Answer the question as you listen. The recording is only played once, so a suggestion is to answer the question right after it is asked to make sure you don't forget it. Pay attention to answers that are synonyms among the options. Also pay attention to the structure. Lectures and presentations have an introduction, body and conclusion. Narrative stories have a beginning, middle and end. Pay attention to the body language or listen for intonation nation patterns used to express different emotions. Words or phrases that are said louder, clearer, or stressed. Listen for pauses between important points. Listen for numbers you might hear in prices, times, or addresses. Listen for verbs or other expressions that show if an event is happening in the past, present, or future. Pay attention to similar sounds. There are often trick questions where some answers sound similar but have very different meanings to the question asked. It might look something like this. We wanted to go and watch a movie, but we lacked the funds. Locked, looked, leaked, lacked. If the keyword in the second line is lacked, it is clear that locked, looked, and leaked are all decoy answers. Contractions. In the English language, contractions are the shortened form of a word. Cannot, can't, or a group of words. He is, he's, that omit certain letters or sounds. These missing letters are indicated with an apostrophe. Some of the most common ones in the English language include the following. He would, he'd, I have, I've, they are, there, cannot, can't. I put this PDF with a list of common contractions in the description below. Listen to different accents. Listening tests sometimes include accents besides the common American one. 
We should expose ourselves to different English accents. Unsurprisingly, the best tip is for you to listen to English regularly. Actively listen to news clips, songs, watch videos and movies, but also include different accents to become more familiar with them. 10 tips for preparing your students for the speaking section of the IELTS, TOEFL or TOEIC tests. 10 tips for the speaking section of the IELTS test. First, the test structure. The IELTS speaking test has three parts and it's 11 to 14 minutes long. Speaking part one, the examiner will ask you general questions about yourself and a range of familiar topics such as home, family, work, studies and interests. This part lasts between four and five minutes. Speaking part two, you will be given a card which asks you to talk about a particular topic. You will have one minute to prepare before speaking for up to two minutes. The examiner will then ask one or two questions on the same topic. Speaking part three, you will be asked further questions about the topic in part two. These will give you the opportunity to discuss more abstract ideas and issues. This part of the test lasts between four and five minutes. Practice. Practice more than you consume. What does that mean? A lot of unsuccessful English learners believe that passive learning will help them improve their English speaking, which of course is untrue. If you only have 10 minutes to study speaking. One minute should be used on reading or listening to a prompt and at least nine minutes solely focused on your speaking. This can be awkward because the hardest part for many English learners is getting over the uncomfortable feeling of speaking out loud. But if you want to improve, that is exactly what you're going to have to do. Try practicing for the specific questions you will receive. For example, one of the questions requires you to describe a picture. Here is how you can do it. What is in the picture? In the picture I can see. There is, there are, there isn't a, there aren't any. Say what is happening with the present continuous. The man is doing, the people are doing, it is raining. Where are things within the picture? At the top, at the bottom of the picture, in the middle of the picture, on the left, right of the picture, next to, in front of, behind, on top of, at the bottom, under. If something isn't clear, it looks like a, uh, it might be a, uh, he could be doing, maybe it's a. Uh. If you're a teacher, you want to show photos to your students and practice them talking about it. Try using basic English questions and answers to grow your confidence and practice speaking. I wrote a book with 1000 questions and answers for English learners based on 50 different topics with 20 questions and example answers for each. You can practice them on your own and use the answer as a basic example. More preferably, if you have a partner, take turns asking one another these questions. 10 for you and 10 for your partner. Record your voice. Think about being an actor preparing to do a play. You don't want your first time saying the lines to be in front of an audience. The same counts for speaking. It might be awkward to listen to your own voice at first, but the best way for you to improve your speaking is to record yourself and then listen to see where you can make improvements. Record yourself with your phone on video or only audio. Listen to your pronunciation, fluency and the overuse of certain words or phrases. It is also important to listen for the use of filler words like mmm or ah. If you are shy, get over it. You must make yourself comfortable with hearing your own voice to improve your English speaking. Grading rubric. Use a grading rubric to practice specific responses to the criteria. It can also help you see things from the grader's perspective. Here are some criteria. Answer to question. This refers to your ability to understand the task and speak about the topic in a way that is relevant. For example, if you are asked to give reasons and examples, you should only do that. If you forget about examples and give details instead, you will lose points. Comprehensibility. This refers to how well you are understood. If someone can easily follow what you're saying, then you'll get a higher score. Organization. If your answer is organized and developed, you will receive a higher grade. Fluency. Speak naturally without hesitation and pauses. There is a rhythm to every language. 
and you want your speech to flow like it would if you were a native speaker. It helps if you watch some good public speakers perform and try to emulate them. Pronunciation. Pronounce individual words correctly with the right word stress and intonation. You will do fine. This is exactly why you should record yourself so you can fix any pronunciation errors you make. Remember, pronunciation is not about accent. Everyone has an accent, but you want to pronounce the words correctly. Grammar. This refers to your ability to use advanced grammatical structures with a high level of accuracy. If you use the same structure or tense over and over again, it will reflect on your score. I am currently doing a series on grammar, which I will put in the description below. Vocabulary. Having a wide range of vocabulary will reflect better on you and help you achieve a better grade. I have a book with 1,300 academic vocabulary that gives you the meaning and example sentences of words you should know to improve your score. Checklists. Besides a grading rubric, you can use a checklist to practice your speaking and erase mistakes you make while speaking. Record yourself and then check how you performed with the checklist. Then improve on the weaknesses you have shown. Did I speak for 42 to 45 seconds? Was my introductions 12 seconds or less? Did I have enough time to include a short conclusion? Did I look at the clock to monitor my time at least twice? Did I include at least two transitional words or phrases? Did I speak at a smooth and even pace for the majority of my response? Did I speak in a natural and conversational tone? No robot voice. Did I elaborate on the topic with a well-developed personal example or anecdote? If you are a teacher, use these to help check your students speaking. Body language. You may think that body language isn't necessary for a test, but research shows that using positive body language has a great effect on students speaking. Here are some tips to improve your confidence for a speaking test. Smile. Force yourself to smile before the prompt is even given. This will send positive hormones to your brain and make you sound friendlier while speaking. Sit or stand upright. Broaden your shoulders and take a deep breath. Many people forget to breathe and tense up their bodies, which makes them even more nervous. By sitting and standing with your back straight and taking up more space, your body will tell your brain that everything is okay. You are safe and in control. It also allows you to breathe more air into your lungs, helping you speak clearly without gasping for air. Make it a habit of showing your palms to viewers. YouTubers and public speakers often do this to show people that they are open and easy to listen to. Move your hands while speaking. When you gesture by using your facial expressions and hands, you become more charismatic and expressive. They have done studies where people have had to think or speak while their hands were bound. They found that the brain function decreased and participants couldn't express themselves clearly. So get in the habit of using your hands while speaking, be it to emphasize points or orchestrating the rhythm of your speech. By being conscious of your body while speaking, you can dramatically improve your confidence and clarity of thought to get a better speaking score. Structure. I always teach my students how to structure their answers to questions from the speaking section. First, you have to do your introduction. Restate an answer. Body. Detail example. Detail two example. Detail three, example. Summary, review what you have talked about. Call to action, what do you think can be learned from this question? In your introduction, you restate the question and then answer your question. In your body, you will give ideally three details with three examples or explanations each. And at the end, summarize what you talked about and give a final call to action. I usually give my students a simple example then let them practice with some easy questions first before getting to more complex ones later. Use a timer. There is a limited time for test takers to prepare and give their answer for the speaking test. For the independent task, they get 15 seconds to prepare and 45 seconds to speak. For the integrated speaking tasks, they get 30 seconds to prepare and 60 seconds to answer. That is not a lot of time. So you have to condition yourself by practicing with a timer. When practicing for specific questions, 
set the timer. You have to get used to the added pressure of time on yourself. Also, you should check the time you have available and use it to its fullest extent. Practicing like this may be annoying at first, but as you learn to keep all your answers within the time frame, your confidence will grow and you will thank yourself for the extra preparation on test day. Transitional phrases. Students can memorize specific phrases to use at the appropriate time. Not only will these phrases help you think about how to construct your answers, it will make you more confident when delivering these answers. You don't have to memorize every phrase, but if you already know how to answer, it will take a lot of stress off your back. Let's look at some really useful transition words and phrases. If you want to give yourself some time to think. Hmm, let's see. That's an interesting question. Let me think. Contrasting. Although. Whereas. While. In spite of. Others may argue. Expanding on your point. First. Second. Third. Similarly. Moreover. Emphasizing a point or argument. Evidently. Above all. Obviously without a doubt. Illustrating cause and effect. As a result, consequently, thanks to. Generalizing. Overall, for the most part, generally speaking. Summarizing or concluding. In conclusion, as a result, in summary. As a matter of fact, not only, but also. Moreover, likewise. Phrases for giving reasons. One cause for that is. Since. Because of. Given that. Phrases for introducing new points. Moreover, furthermore, in addition to. Practice beginning your answers with phrases such as, as far as I'm concerned, personally, I think that. It seems to me that. To describe problems and solutions, use introduction phrases like these. The problem is. The problem seems to be that. The real issue seems to be that. To compare and contrast ideas. Try expressions like, on the contrary, instead I'd say that, some may argue that. Transitional verbs. Try to use transitional adverbs to make your speech flow. For example, however, therefore, consequently, moreover, nevertheless, nonetheless, thus, and hence. When discussing your personal opinions, use adjectives like reliable, resourceful, sensible, passionate, and bright. You need to demonstrate that you have a good knowledge of vocabulary. Including various adverbs and adjectives can add more expression and complexity to your English. Use phrasal verbs, but not too much. Native speakers often use phrasal verbs in conversation, especially in more informal situations. It's a good idea to use some phrasal verbs during your speaking test to show that you know them. Get on. Get back. Get over, look after, look up, look forward to, put off, put on. I have a list of 100 common phrasal verbs. Join the email group in the description below to get them for free. Secrets for the speaking section. It's okay to hesitate for a moment or two when it's time to respond. However, it is best to fill as much of the time as possible with your response. If you have a few extra seconds available, you can sum things up with a short conclusion. You will lose marks for poor communication, so don't try to use big words that you can't say properly. You will also lose marks for improper use of vocabulary and idioms. Make sure you know how to use an expression properly before you use it in the exam. The speaking questions are not random. There is a logic to how questions are developed. Each section aims to test particular language skills. In part one, the linguistic functions that are tested are likes and dislikes and preferences, abilities, frequency of actions and other times related questions, people and places, especially related to skills of recommending something. Part three tests about 10 or so language skills, compare and contrasting, especially related to how things have changed from the past till now, speculating on future developments, advantages and disadvantages, problems and solutions, and again, several others. Pay close attention to tenses when comparing the past with now. Brainstorm different solutions to different kinds of problems 
and knowing phrases that could be used for clean transitions. I would argue that there are a wide range of measures that could be taken to tackle this problem. Every time the question is related to what or why you like something or whether you can do something, like you can play a musical instrument. The key to answering these questions is by going back into the past and pointing out when you developed interest in this activity. Trying to list the advantages of listening to pop music, which is a go-to answer for many students, is not a good strategy. Remember to practice regularly. Focus on pronunciation and intonation and familiarize yourself with the test format. With dedication and effort, you can confidently showcase your English speaking skills and achieve success in these standardized tests. The speaking section of English language tests requires consistent practice and preparation. By following these 10 tips, you can enhance your speaking abilities, increase fluency, and perform well in the IELTS, TOEFL, or TOEIC tests. 10 tips for the writing section of IELTS. The IELTS writing section has two tasks general and academic, and it is 60 minutes long. If you're doing academic writing, you will be presented with a graph, table, chart, or diagram, and asked to describe, summarize, or explain the information in your own words. You may be asked to describe and explain data, describe stages of a process, how something works, or describe an object or event. If you chose general, you will be presented with a situation and asked to write a letter requesting information or explaining a situation. The letter may be personal, semi-formal or formal in style. Task 2 is 40 minutes long. You will be asked to write an essay in response to a point of view, argument or problem. Essay plan. Writing down a short essay plan before you start writing will help you to use your time efficiently. When you know what you're going to write next, you won't panic or pause in between each paragraph to think. When you read or listen to the task, write down the outline for your essay. Introduction. Restate the question and provide an answer. Give a summary of what point you will be arguing. Body. Give a detail plus an example. The example can come from personal experience or the text. Very important. Don't quote directly from the text. Paraphrase instead. I'll explain it in tip 4. Paragraph conclusion. End each paragraph with a clear conclusion sentence. Depending on the test, you can have 3 to 5 body paragraphs. Conclusion. Summarize what you explained in the body. Restate your answer. During the essay, you want to have a clear opinion and stick to it. Do not try to argue both sides of a point. Give a short call to action. What does it mean? What do you want the reader to think? Idioms. Bigger fish to fry. A chip off the old block. Hit the nail on the head. These are all examples of English idioms. One of the most difficult things for English learners is learning all the different idioms found in the English language. There are many common and not so common idioms. If you don't understand the context and nuance of using them, your writing, speaking and understanding will suffer. I wrote a book with 1000 idioms that every English learner should know. It gives an explanation of the idiom as well as an example of how to use it. You can find it in the description below. Take notes. Whether you get a reading passage or listening piece for the task, your job is to stay focused and take notes. Write down the author's position and main points. You don't need to take extensive notes on the passage, just the key points and information that you can use for your essay. Overthinking the hook. Some students tend to overthink the opening line of the essay. This problem is really common. For some reason, students think that they need to start with something really interesting that draws the attention of the reader. As a result, they waste precious time. Honestly, the opening line isn't that important. Spend no more than a minute on your hook. Just starting will give you momentum instead of stressing about what you will write. Write something quick and grammatically correct. If the essay is about classes at university, try something like, it is critically important that students enjoy all their classes. That's about all you need. Don't obsess over the hook. You don't need to hook anyone. Don't quote. 
For the integrated writing task, you are expected to explain the positions of the author and the professor in your own words. It is very important, therefore, to paraphrase everything. This is especially true of the reading passage. Remember, while you are writing your essay, the reading section will be right in front of you. If you directly quote the author, the e-rater system will pick up on it and this can lead to a reduction in your score. For example, let's say the reading passage states, there are many people who argue that corn ethanol should replace fossil fuel gas as the primary source for running cars. Don't say in your answer, the author discusses how there are many who would argue that corn ethanol should replace fossil fuel gas as the primary source for running cars. This is a huge mistake that many students make. Instead, paraphrase the author's position, such as, the author discusses the advantages of switching from fossil fuels to the alternative energy source, corn-based ethanol. Transitional phrases. Add transitional phrases to improve your score. To sequence points and reasons. Organizing points made in each passage. First sentence of each body paragraph. And then, first of all, firstly, in the first place, first and foremost, firstly, secondly, thirdly, next, after that, meanwhile, lastly, later, finally, while. To elaborate, reporting on points from the listening passage in body paragraphs. When explaining your reason, usually the second sentence in the body. When developing your personal example. Above all, actually, additionally, as well as, as a matter of fact, in addition, believe it or not, furthermore, indeed, in fact, just as, moreover, more importantly, too. To illustrate, when introducing your personal example or anecdote, as an illustration, for example, for instance, I remember when, such as. Time management. For the integrated writing task, you only have 20 minutes to write your essay. Therefore, while time management is important throughout the test, it is especially important in this task. You should spend approximately two minutes taking notes and outlining your answer. Three minutes writing your introduction paragraph, 11 minutes writing the body paragraphs, two minutes for the conclusion, and the last three minutes for editing. Make an outline. Making an outline is a good idea for any writing task, but especially important for independent writing. Unlike the integrated essay, this answer must come completely from you. With only 30 minutes to write your answer, it is important to come up with a plan first. Here are the kinds of questions you can expect. Do you agree or disagree with the statement? What is your opinion on the topic? Which one would you choose, A, B or C? What are the advantages and disadvantages? Next, write down two strong arguments or reasons that you can make to support your position. Don't try to write more than two since you only have 30 minutes to write a strong and detailed essay. Finally, in your outline, write down a personal example that you can use in your answer to illustrate each one of your reasons. Main point, reason one, personal example one. Reason two, personal example two. Have a clear opinion. Is it better to study in a group or to study on your own? Of course, sometimes you would prefer to work alone and at other times it would be best to team up with a group. However, don't do that on test day. Do not write one paragraph in favor and one paragraph against. Leave your personal feelings aside and take one clear and specific stand. Think of your independent essay as a persuasive essay. Your job is to convince the reader to agree with your opinion. It's much easier to do that when you argue from a single perspective. Therefore, choose the side that you agree with the most or have the best personal example that will highlight this position and stick to your side. Conclusion sentences. Be sure to always include a conclusion sentence at the end of each body paragraph that will connect back to your main point. In other words, the last sentence of each body paragraph should always connect to the main argument thus addressing the question directly. While commonly forgotten by students, this will help keep you focused on the main idea of your essay. It is easy to get sidetracked while writing, especially about a personal experience. So here is the general makeup of your body paragraph. 
one sentence providing the reason for your opinion, one to three sentences further explaining your reason, three to five sentences explaining your personal example that supports your reason, one concluding sentence that connects your personal example back to your stance on the topic. Don't forget this. Time to edit. One of the best writing tips I could possibly share here is to leave yourself time to edit. Plan on finishing your essay with at least a few minutes left to edit your essay. It's annoying, I know. Especially since at this point you have been busy writing for so long, you will be ready to go home and relax. But remember, there is no spell check on the exam. That's right, you will be responsible for finding spelling and grammar mistakes yourself. Also, be sure to pay special attention to spacing and punctuation. So, to prepare for the exam, always give yourself a couple of minutes to proofread your essays. And starting now, write your practice answers with spell check turned off. Mastering the writing section of English language tests requires consistent effort and practice. 